Texas Tech continues to struggle, we'll give our thoughts. Are the NFC Divisional Leaders legit? And what's our predictions for Tech basketball? Find out next. MCTV Sports 101 starts now. Hey there, sports fans, and welcome to MCTV Sports 101. I'm Kyle Stafford. And I'm Billy Engel. The Red Raider football team blew an 11-point lead and fell in overtime to Kansas State 42-35 on Saturday. Billy, why does this team struggle to finish games? I mean, I don't know if there's any one thing you can particularly point to. The thing that just stands out to me is it doesn't look like the team has heart. Yeah. They don't have the will to finish games. They don't. They get fatigued as the game goes on. There's not very many leaders to step up on there and say, "Hey, guys, let's make a right. play." Uh, you know, and it goes both ways. The offense has its struggling woes in the fourth quarter. I think you said, "What was it? No points uh, with 14 yeah, minutes the left 14 in the fourth minute mark." Yeah. Yeah, no points there. And and the thing that just really, just really, you know, grinds my gears is is we're beating them in almost every category. 26 first downs compared to their 24. Uh, they did get us uh, in rushing yards, but you know they did have a good rush game. But and that's their type of offense. Exactly. That's kind of what they came in game planning to do. But then you look at the passing yards. 405 compared to 263. I mean, I just don't get it. You know, and a game in and game out, it looks like okay. You know, the team's moving well, the offense is making plays, the defense is getting stops, and then you get later into the game, and, and then they just, just hits. exactly, right. and they just don't have that will. And then another thing, it just got a question. There's 45 seconds left in that fourth quarter after Kansas State goes in and ties up the ball game after the two-point conversion. And he had a timeout. And the decision not to go not to go down there and try and score yeah. or get a field goal, I realize that, you know, we've had our kicking woes in this in this season, really, but we did get Clayton Hatfield back, and, you know, that's something that could possibly push his confidence forward. I'm just I'm yeah. confused, Kyle. I mean, you, you did miss a field goal on the previous drive that gave Kansas State the chance, but – I, I say on at least on first down, you take a chance. You have a Kiki QT, you have a Dylan Cantrell. Take a chance, see what happens on first down. If you don't get it, I understand. Then then run out the clock, take a knee, go into overtime. But you're on your home field. You got the home crowd behind you. I understand Shimnick threw a, a pick six earlier in the game, but you can't not trust what you're putting out there mm -hmm. on the field. As the offensive coordinator of that team, Cliff Kingsbury needs to trust what his guys can do and trust himself that he can make the right play calls in that situation. So yeah, just another lead blown this season. You had an 18 point lead blown at West Virginia, now an 11 point lead. And that's not even counting the Arizona State and Houston games as well. Those games, they had big leads and blew those as well. So I just don't understand what changes from halftime uh, from the first half to the second half because something a light switches and the Red Raiders just shut off mm -hmm. while the opposing team gets going. It just seems like they get content. They think they won the game, and so they start to ease off the break, yeah. and as soon as they, see, they do that, other team can sense that energy, and they capitalize on it. Right. The Rams, Eagles, and the Saints all lead their respective divisions and have done so in impressive fashion. Kyle, are these teams legit? I think so. I especially think the Eagles are, are legit. I think they're the best team in the football right now. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure it's close because the Kansas City Chiefs have kind of fell off after a great three-week stretch. But, you know, looking at the Saints, I mean, it's not just Drew Brees this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have great running backs in Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara, uh, both both really good at different type of things. Ingram probably the better runner and Kamara a better receiver. Uh, but Good, good wideouts as well. Their defense has played well enough. That's always been the Achilles heel of the Saints. They finally have a decent defense, and they're forcing turnovers, which mm -hmm. makes a big difference for them. And, and as for you know, some of the other teams, uh, the Rams, uh, the Rams they're look really good. good. 50 points yesterday. Both them and the Eagles had 50 points yesterday. Yeah. Todd Gurley and Jared Goff. Jared Goff is blossoming into the pick that he that he was. A lot of people Growing doubted up right him. before our right. eyes. And a lot of that credit goes to Sean McVay. He's a oh, heck yeah. of a coach, and he's done a fantastic job since joining the Rams. Yeah, I mean, I do I do agree with you. I mean, Eagles right now, as painful as it is for me to say, being a Cowboys fan that I am, but they they look like the best team right now in the league. And Carson Wentz is, looks like he is only getting better with yeah. every single game that he plays. And you know, they get Jay Ajayi. Yeah, a wonderful trade. you got to wonder what the Scores Dolphins are the doing first, there. First, first game as 43-yard run. I think it was so well, first touchdown of the season too. So. And so and one that we're we're kind of overlooking here is the Vikings. Yeah. They're leading the North right now, but I, I do know, think I, the North is one of the weaker divisions. They're one of the. I, they're not as big of a surprise as the other three teams. I think the Eagles aren't as much of a surprise either. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely say that the Saints and the Rams are. But yeah, Minnesota, like you talked about, they're they're really good and they're doing it without Sam Bradford. Yeah, and so who kind of and Alvin like Cook. And the only thing that I have against the Saints is is I feel like that turn those turnovers that they're getting. Uh, you know, right now that are really helping them win ball games. 
that will slow down. And so the pressure will come on the defense to make methodical type stops yeah. and not just rely on the turnover. Yeah. So that's something to look forward as they go through the stretch. But and right the, now they're playing great football. And the Panthers still right there on their heels. Exactly. Texas Tech basketball kicks off this Friday. Billy, what are your predictions for the team this season? I mean, I got high hopes, and I know we say this kind of every year, but right now, I, and high hopes being for us at Texas Tech isn't, you know, national championship right. or anything like that, but what I do a believe birth. a tournament berth is something that I think is very capable for this team to do. Led by the seniors in Keenan Evans, Zach Smith, and Nyan Stevenson, who Nyan Stevenson is really coming into well. his role, Justin Gray. And then you got the, the freshman, Zaire Smith, who's really been a great addition for this yeah, team. Yeah, him and Jared Cover, both freshmen, so I think they're going to have really big impacts on this season. Yeah, and so, you know, and just the ability to have that senior leadership on this team is something that I think that will deter them from making that late season collapse that we saw yeah. last year. Last yeah. season, that we, we put ourselves in a great position to make a tournament berth, and as the season went on, I, I don't know if it was fatigue or, you know, just contentness that the, uh, the players kind of got with. But, you know, head coach Chris Beard has really known how to ha – has really done well with this team. And I think with this veteran leadership he has on this team, will do even well. And we're, we're in a great conference to, to have competition yeah. and to be able to prove ourselves. And I think the conference is still going to be really good, but I think it takes a slight step back. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like Iowa State, I think, kind of falls back to the pack a little bit. Uh, I think even Baylor maybe takes a little bit of a step. Obviously, Kansas is going to be up there. Oklahoma's reloaded. Uh, you know, they're going to be talented. TCU's back with everybody mm -hmm. uh, from an NIT run. You have Texas, who is going to have talent, just not sure if they're going to put it together. Yeah. And then West Virginia, Bob Huggins knows how to win games with mm -hmm. the press as well. Kansas State, still an iffy team, so we'll kind of see with them. I think Oklahoma State uh, will probably take a really really far step back, especially losing Brad Underwood uh, and a couple of other players that they had. So we'll see what kind of that happens. I like the non-conference schedule for Tech. They play Boston College. Maine, uh, that's a good team. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a team that's going to be close to a tournament bid. You have Seton Hall in South Carolina. I really like both of those. I yeah, think those Seton Hall's be, great matchup. Yeah, that's that, going to be a great garden, measuring test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, that's, we'll play in the, in the Madison Square Garden right. for that. That's going to be a great measuring stick for Texas Tech to see where they're at. And yeah, I just I, I really like to see a big season from Keenan Evans, Justin, mm -hmm. Justin Gray, and Zach Smith. I think those three guys will lead the way for Texas Tech. I think they get to at least 20 wins this year. Yeah. So, so where do you see us falling in the conference? Where right now? Where do you I, see us? I say probably the highest you get is fifth, but mm -hmm. 20 wins will get you there. See, I think we got a chance to make it fourth, just depending on the rest, how the rest of the the conference shapes up. Right. But I, I think fourth is definitely doable for us. NCAA tournament as well. Exactly, and I do believe that. Now it's time for who you got. Let's start off with Texas Tech versus Baylor. Kyle, who you got? Uh, I'm going to go with the Baylor Bears. They only have one win on the season, but they actually are tied with Texas Tech in conference <laughs> play, tied for ninth. So I'm going to go with Baylor. I, I think Baylor uh, is a little better than the record says. Mm -hmm. They play some games close. Oklahoma was a close game. Uh, they play some other teams close throughout the season. So I think Baylor will get the job done. It's in Arlington. Tech really hasn't played well in Arlington. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the Bears. Yeah, and you know what? I, I'm trusting us again. You know, as, as dicey as this is for me to say, I'm going to go with Texas Tech. Uh, you know, it's a game we, you we should win. Yeah, it's a game we should win. We've sh we've shown flashes of our ability to win games. So I think that, and you know, we we got the win against Baylor last year in the stadium. So I don't know if that momentum rolls over, but you know, it's do or die time right yeah. now if this team wants to make a bowl game. Yeah. And three you know, games, got to get two wins. Exactly. So I think that Cliff Kingsbury can can rally his troops well enough to try and beat this struggling Baylor Bear team. Iowa State hosts Oklahoma State. Billy, who you got? I got Oklahoma State. Uh, they had a tough loss last week in Norman. Uh, played great. Uh, you know, it ended in a heartbreaker for them. Iowa State also had uh, a loss this past weekend. So I think Oklahoma State is going to rally it back together, and Mason Rudolph is going to play uh, like the extremely talented quarterback that he is. I think I'm going to go with the Cyclones. I really like Iowa State this season. I know they had a tough loss at West Virginia, maybe a little bit of a letdown game. Mm -hmm. I, I thought they should have won that game. They were close. They were right there, had to settle for a field goal instead. So I like Iowa State. It's back at home. I think Oklahoma State will kind of be reeling a little bit from that loss. I think the Cyclones get it done. Yeah. Georgia travels to Auburn. Kyle, who you got? 
Uh, Georgia's the best. They're the best team in the country with Alabama. Mm -hmm. I think Auburn will be a good test for them, and I think that's going to be a great football game. Yeah. Uh, but I think with Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle, I, I think the Georgia Bulldogs get it done. Yeah, I, I agree with you right there. Georgia all the way. Uh, they've proven that they even got up to, to number one in the rankings, yeah. uh, you know, a, a week ago. Tough game was. against South Carolina, but they're still able to pull it out. Hey, exactly, and that's what great teams do. They win ball games, especially whenever they're close. Uh, Auburn, you know, they, they ha they've, they're a good team. They've got good players. They haven't been able to put it all together. I think to perform like they'd want to. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, I think Georgia pulls it out. Oklahoma welcomes TCU to town. Billy, who you got? I got Oklahoma. Uh, TCU, and this is going to be a great matchup, maybe even one of the best matchups of the, of the weekend. Right. Uh, but, you know, Oklahoma's riding high, especially after that, that big thriller win against OSU. TCU, uh, they, they've got a great record. They've got some good wins just against OSU. I just don't trust Kenny Hill. I, I just don't trust Kenny Hill. I mean, and not to say that he's a bad player by any means because right. he, he's, shoot, he's shown that he is a good player, but I, I don't know what it, I, I just don't think that he'll be able to make the, you know, the precision throws in the pocket that Oklahoma is going to force him to do. Right. And then I also don't, you know, trust that TCU defense that they're going to be able to stop Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield, <laughs> uh, you know, the Heisman the front runner right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with Baker Mayfield and the Sooners. They're mm -hmm. the better team in this game. Uh, TCU, though, still has a chance to finish atop the conference. Yeah. Miami hosts Notre Dame. Kyle, who you got? I got the Fighting Irish. They're really good. Uh, mm -hmm. So is Miami. They had a big win over Virginia Tech, but I really yeah. think Notre Dame is one of the top four teams in the country. I think they'll prove it this weekend with a win in Miami. Yeah, I'm going to go with Notre Dame as well, just because right now Notre Dame, Notre Dame is basically playing playoff football right now. Right. Uh, if they lose that game, Oklahoma is creeping at that five spot, just waiting to and jump in. And with no in. conference championship game for them and not being in a conference, a loss here would end their season. Exactly, and I, and I do believe that they, they're one of the best top four teams in the country, so I think they're going to get it done. Mississippi State takes on Alabama. Billy, who you got? Alabama. There ain't Roll no, side. There ain't no Roll one that's going to stop this team right now, <laughs> especially Mississippi State's been playing well. They're, yeah. you know, they're a very uh, you know, run-of-the-mill team, but if you're going to try and take down the Titan that is Alabama, you've got to be coming with something more than I think Mississippi, Mississippi State has. So for that reason, I'm going to go with uh, go with the Crimson Tide. Yeah, Roll Tide, that's all I can say. <laughs> Well, that's our show for this week's edition of MCTV Sports 101. Join us next week for the latest big-name stories in sports. I'm Kyle Stafford. And I'm Billy Engel. Until next time. <laughs>